Good Tuesday morning, and welcome to Ice HTV, the internal combustion engine age YouTube channel that talks all about all about my cars and trucks, SUVs, and motorcycles, the addictions, the constant buying addictions. Wow, yeah, hey, Tuesday morning there, and wow, <laughs> yeah, I'm a little rusty this morning, yeah, it's just never ending, all out, go out, and uh, it's just a lot of work, but hey. Thanks for watching my channel. Appreciate all the nice comments, all the supporters. I got great subscribers. I've been blessed. So I only hope you're having a blessed day in these challenging times of our country that we live in and the challenging times of, of uh, economy. Is it? I don't know. It's just so confusing. You that watch my channel, you'd be like, yeah, how could you tell us the economy's in trouble when all we see you is buy cars, trucks, motorcycles? Yeah, I hear you. But uh, it's all risky. Extremely risky, but here you are. It's a Ford Explorer ST 2023. Leftover, discounted, extremely low rate financing. Uh, basically, my car payment is half of what it was to the Ford Tremor truck. And this is my third Ford Explorer ST, even beyond believable for me to just, uh, I talk about it on my channel all the time on how I buy a car, I drive it, I get the fun, I sell it, only to turn around and buy it again. So I've already had a blue one, I've had a red one, and now I have a silver one. And, and it is a nice vehicle. It really is. I mean, it's nothing like, you know, wow, wow. It doesn't really have that sex appeal or that real muscular, badass look. But overall, it's just a really good, overall, versatile, really um, practical vehicle. And so for me, it isn't a, uh, it's, it's actually a wise purchase. It's a wiser purchase than most vehicles I've bought recently because it's the lowest payment I've signed off on. It's the lowest interest rate I've signed off on. So it is extremely, uh, really a great um, deal. And it's way over here, and it's not over there because the barn is just so out of control. I think I'm going to move two or three of my vehicles out of that area and just put them over here because it's just it's so bad. The birds are destroying my uh my property and my vehicles it's so bad and over here they're not nesting so they just don't have as much of a bird activity over here as we walk around the uh the leftover ford explorer st which looks like the police cruiser the leo which i've talked about that many times but here's the thing yesterday we uh i think i had a really good i think i had a great conversation yesterday with the uh, goodbye conversations i really think that i just really I mean, myself, I just felt good about that conversation. Every now and then, I have conversations, and I feel weak. And that one didn't feel weak. I thought I pretty much hit what's going on in this country and what we're, what we're witnessing and seeing. So, <clears throat> one subscriber reached out, and I love this, because I do read everybody's comments. I really do. And I do try to respond or give the thumbs up or the love, the love emoji to share with you that, you know, really cool that you reached out and you interacted. So one of the subscribers said, don't you have any regrets on buying these cars? Did you ever have, you know, buyer's remorse? So I said, you know what? There's a great conversation. Let's take the, uh, the goodbye conversation to the regret conversation. And every person on this YouTube channel that watches me, every one of you has had a regret in your life. Every single one of us. It's just part of who we are. We go out and do things, and then we step back, and we regret um, what we did. And it can be buying things, your actions, relationships, jobs. It's infinite. Now, a guy is interested in my trailer. I mean, this trailer deal, this, this I've been blown away. I'm finally getting some activity in this trailer. And let me get the dogs in the barn here, and we'll go look at the trailer. Because you want to know if there's a roller's. And the back of the trailer, but see here, they're there. They're, you know, they're just crapping on everything. The birds, busiest time of year. So for me, oh, it's just, uh, I guess it's just stressful in some ways, just to have to deal with having to clean these vehicles and clean the crap off of them. Because the bird crap will destroy your paint. <laughs> and a lot of you are like do the PP. I don't keep cars. I don't keep cars long enough to justify this customization. It just doesn't work. It's too much money. You won't get it back at the dealership. No, stop it, Keever. You gotta stay out here. And uh, you're not going upstairs because it'll be a fiasco. Come on, Tango. Nope, nope. Come on, Tang Tang, you're late. Get up here. I've never even ridden the breakout since it's just my schedule. I mean, you're here watching my channel. I mean, it's just never ending. I have so many projects, it's just never ending. <laughs> and then 
being committed to making YouTube videos, being committed to going to a car show, and taking time to walk around and share the car show and and uh, talk with people. I mean, it's a lot of time. It's a lot of work. And so, in, in some ways, it sacrifices a lot of other things. But I do enjoy making these videos. And I think I'm going to get the Insta360. I think it's called the X4 camera. That would be perfect for my motorcycle setup. Only downside of that is when you do all that video content, you have to have a computer to download that little uh, SIM card or whatever you call those little um, cards that are in that camera. And then you got to transfer it to your computer. And then you got to, um, you're going to have to then create your content through your computer. It's a lot of work. I mean, so I know that I'm a wild man in how I video things with my, uh, with my, my phone here. I mean, look at this here. I mean, just trash, trash. And this will do serious damage to these cars if this morning I don't get out of here, which I'm going to have no choice when I get off this video. I'm going to have to get these cars out of this area and totally start um, cleaning them because they're getting destroyed. And then my trailer is getting destroyed, which is not comforting. I'll put my new camper here, and that'll be crapped on all the damn time. Just, oh, my God. Yeah, you know, but here's the thing. Um, I'm not the guy that likes to go kill animals. That's just not, just, I'm just not that type of person. And, uh, I just, uh, you know, I just don't get off and really want to start shooting the birds. Oh, it does. It has rollers. Cool. This guy. So, yes, it does. That'd be great. The selling dealer of that camper, they will buy my trailer. And, in all sincereness, the, the owner there, Kelly, who really is a cool guy, he has uh, offered me, uh, you know, a reasonable price for him to be able to sell it himself. But I've got another guy, I think, that may take this trailer. That'd be really cool because I just don't want to, have to rearrange my property for that trailer. Um, and that trailer will have all the electric hookup. The trailer being here is the best spot. Plus, I can use it. If I want to hang out here one night and sleep in the trailer, camper, I can. So, yeah, so that, yeah, I just witnessed the bird crapping over everything. So Kiefer regrets losing his ball. Where's your ball? We've gone through so many balls with this dog. It's beyond believable. And if he's not eating something, he's not happy. But where's your ball, Keefe? So I've gone out here. So anyways, you're watching my channel. Um, yeah, I mean, do I have regrets? I, I do. And like this truck here, in some ways I think, eh, was it really worth it? Even Kirby yesterday, I think he took it a little personal, but I just, he asked me, he said, how do you like the truck? I said, you know, it's nice, but it's got, it's pretty free spirit up in those higher speeds. Like, what do you mean by that? I, I said, you know, it's not a lot, in some ways, I think my Tremor was a little better. He's like, really? I'm like, well, the Tremor package is a factory built um, suspension. It's a nice setup. And I said, on your truck that you modified, the, uh, the front end, once you get those 70 mile an hour speeds, 65, 70 mile an hour speeds, that front end starts walking. And But the Fords, I've talked about this on my YouTube channel all the time. Um, every Ford heavy duty truck I've owned that has a front solid axle, they drive like a Jeep. They walk. <laughs> my Ford F450, it walks. They all walk. But it, 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 it's worse when you mod it because now you have a bigger tire and wheel package so that that's more tire hitting the pavement so it even has more of a walk capability so to me this truck feels more uh free spirited than my other truck did so yeah so part of me is like why did i really do that but at the same time this really is a beautiful truck i really do like the interior of it i like the updated look to it so it's a cool truck and the reality is i tr uh, yeah i went into more debt but i want a swap, a note for a note. You know, and this is the thing. I have the capability, and I have to be very careful with this, if I want to take that as a tax write-off for my business. And, and keep in mind, I don't do that with all my vehicles. They just throw a red flag. But when it comes to a truck, um, I do have the right, if I want to make a claim on that, as a tax write-off. I mean, so, and keep in mind, um, I'm not that foolish to claim every car in my driveway as a tax write-off. It won't work. My tax guy wouldn't even let me do that. He's like, you're, you're kidding yourself. You're going to be audited. But the whole point is, I can. I can do those type of things. But back to the, the truck, it's just that I swapped a note for a note. But, yeah, I incurred more debt on the truck. Absolutely. Which, yeah, that's not exciting. But I got a little better rate and blah, blah, blah than the former truck. And the truck has 12,000 miles 
versus having 44,000 miles. And these tires will, will last a while. So, so, but do I, in some ways, do I have a regret? But the interesting thing about that is the Trevor truck didn't end up being traded for that. The Ford Raptor Bronco is what got traded for that. That's where it kind of got all kind of twisted and confusing. But that truck had less negative equity in it. And it just made more sense on how I did that deal. And I've had my day with the Bronco. And in all reality, it's just incredible how the Ford Explorer ST is so much more of a practical overall vehicle that I could use to work out of, travel, do a lot of things good gas mileage and it really came from the tremor truck created the ford explorer st so in that scenario there for the get-go if i would have just gone and gotten the ford explorer st and traded the uh the tremor for that then yeah you know that would have kind of been probably just a cleaner thing and kept the ford bronco raptor yeah i i know that's where you say wow what did I just do to myself, right? <laughs> I, mean, I get it. But here's the thing. I've had the Broncos. Even my daughter yesterday, um, she actually enjoys the Wild Track more. The Wild Track just is a really fun vehicle. So, eh, you know, and do I regret letting the, the Bronco? Nah, I'm not there at that stage at this point right now. Down the road, I could be like, eh, but I've had so many. And I have so many vehicles. And But here's the thing that is intriguing to me. That this whole pandemic, it's really, it's really kind of just aggravating, befuddling, and it's, it's all about the pandemic created such the fake economy. And if you really watched my YouTube channel during that 2020, 2021, 2022, I constantly talked about the fake economy. And it wasn't just me. I mean, I know many people um, would be on the same page of the fake economy because it just created so much money that was out in the market that people just paid whatever they wanted to pay and everybody got caught up in the heyday of the free money even the manufacturers and that's why i think are the manufacturers going to really regret what they did to the consumers and what i mean by that is they've raised the prices on all their cars and vehicles so much that they've created their own demise in so many ways and even yesterday if you saw the video of me seeing the Raptor R finally come in and being excited about that vehicle, but I already knew that that's just not within hand's reach of my capability financially because I buy too much stuff. I just buy way too much stuff. I mean, think about this. I think about my 12th vehicle purchase, and I'm, we're four months in. So if I duplicated that three more times, um, that would be 36 vehicles, which I just really can't. I, I know, I'm going to be here, but yeah, I, know. I just, how do I sustain it? Because I have such new stuff that is such requiring $10,000, 10000 plus, dollar, you know, me writing a check to get out of a vehicle that will still even have negative equity buried into another vehicle, which just, just makes no sense. There's no way. That's why that Raptor R, beautiful truck, but guess what? I came to closure that the Ram TRX truck would be the better package and the better price because it's... Thirty, forty thousand dollars less than the Raptor R without even ADM. So it's ridiculous. And even the people work at the Coons Baltimore Ford, even them, you know, they're they're they have sense. We had that conversation that on how the uh, the Ford has so jacked the prices on all their vehicles, it's really created a problem. And and this is the danger. This is the regret factor. If Ford starts going back to the $20,000 off on these $98,000, you know, this truck brand new is going to come in about 92, 90, 94. That's going to be the price of that truck. So if they go back to the good old days pre pandemic and start off in the 10, 15 grand off, some cases 20 grand off, what's it going to do to the used car market? It's going to destroy it like never seen because so many people are buried. You know, they're buried in these cars that they didn't get the big discounts because the big discounts have all gone away for the most part. I mean, even for me, in my eyes, that Explorer should have been 10 grand off. So it's seven grand off. But we get the low rate interest rate. So could I could I got if you want to start arguing, it's like forget it. So but in my eyes, that thing should be 10 grand off. But no, you know, you get seven grand off. You go buy a truck today, this truck, will they take five grand off? I think they will. You can get 10 or 15. I don't think they're there yet on that. There's the birds. Yeah, 
yeah, those birds. Oh my gosh. So, so anyways, so for the car industry, you just have to honestly say that do they, do the key personnel know that they really jacked the prices on these vehicles so much that it really has created a huge problem? And it's been talked about for years. So I don't think this conversation is really anything new to the average person that's really in the market. That you can talk, and it's and that's all the talk. I talk about all the time. All the YouTube content is under, underlying message in today's YouTube world, and the certain uh, creators is regret. It's just regret, regret, regret. People regret signing off on that uh, high car payment. Uh, you know, how many times have we heard that? People regret buying uh, an RV. How many times have you heard that? People regret buying a boat. People regret. Um, you know, buying their house at a higher interest rate that they really can't afford. I mean, it goes on and on and on. It's the demise of our society, our country, and it's all underlying message is regret. But what's really, to me, always very, it's just, it's, it's when you make a mistake, will you actually admit it? I mean, sincerely, when you've done something bad and you regret what you've done, will you come to the table and honestly tell somebody that you screwed up and yeah, you regret your decisions? That's very challenging. That's very challenging. I don't really have a problem saying that because whatever. Who cares? It's mankind. You don't live forever. Are you right now focused? Do you ever have you ever walked around a cemetery? Have you ever walked around a cemetery? And every cemetery stone you walk by, there's a life story of a person of regrets. Do you stop, look at that stone, and say, what was that person's regrets in their life? And then you would hold it to them and be mad at them or or you'd be in anguish? No, you don't do that. You go to the cemetery and you honor for those that lived and have passed. And most likely, if it's somebody you know personally, it's a moment of sorrow and also a moment of happiness because that person made you who you are. Hey, Keithy, hi. What you doing, bud, huh? He's getting big, isn't he? You're going to be a big boy. So uh, so, so what, the reason I'm bringing that up, the regret, it's we live today more than ever that the powers to be are making really bad decisions. They really are. And it's it takes time for things is really to start to show face of really just bad decisions. Even for me and my YouTube channel. This is very risky for me buying all these cars and trucks, motorcycles, heavy debt, heavy burden, heavy, 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 heavy. And it just takes time to see if the Iceman um, will have regrets because he can't afford these things anymore. Is Iceman's financial, uh, you know, financial havoc begins to take place in his life because he's put more time in his YouTube channel than his business. And the YouTube channel hasn't really rewarded him like he thought he would. I mean, that's, there's a lot of truth to that if you're watching my channel. I have dedicated so much time on this YouTube channel. In some ways, it's taken away my drive for the business that makes all me, me all my money because I've always wanted this YouTube channel to grow and prosper and then start to become more of my retirement income as I progress in life. So while I have regrets down the road, this channel never really takes off and prospers. Um, yeah, I will, because I dedicated so much of my time in my life to thinking I could have something else in my life to make me a living, uh, which in the end, it didn't, uh, it didn't happen, which is wow, right? And one of my YouTube subscribers, you know, he was saying, you know, don't be worried about all this and that. And he's more, he's a godly person. And I don't disagree, you know, that the, the viewers like him and others that watch my channel, those will start to appear more, but it just takes time. And yeah, and I appreciate that. It was a very nice, uh, very nice words of wisdom from one of my subscribers. So thank you very much for reaching out on that. But once again, we're in a society today more than ever. You know, I've had a video of the fearless leaders. You know, where have the fearless leaders gone in our country? They're gone. I make fun of this guy, Mike Johnson, who Matt Gates kicked out Kevin McCarthy uh, to be the, the speaker of the House for the uh, Republican Party. And I, and I just question what was going to come from all this. And in the end, this guy, Mike Johnson, my perception of that guy, he's a little weakling. He's a weakling. I mean, he's got a stature of him not looking like a very strong person. Um, he's caved to the whole um, Democratic Party. And what they want, he's giving them. So for Matt Gates, and now Matt Gates is is people are saying we should put Matt Gates in as uh, the Speaker of the House. Well, this is the guy that's just what do you? I mean, I'm like, right, Mike? Really, really? This is the guy? Yeah, right. But the point is, 
our leaders, <clears throat> we don't have the fearless leaders anymore. So they're doing things. They're playing, they're playing the game of this society, what some of you say, the cultural revolution. And, and they're making decisions that I think in the end they're going to regret. And, and sadly, I think that the, uh, the population in our country <clears throat> is in that same moat. That they're letting decisions being made that will take time to play out for you to understand that those were the wrong decisions. And that's how regret happens in our life. You marry somebody and you think you love this person and you think that you're both on the same page in life. And you go through the relationship of having a child or kids and the career and you raise them. But as time progresses... You, you come to understand that you really aren't who you thought they were. And you then kind of have that separation. And then you have that regret. And then that regret turns into the anguish and anger that unfortunately then is put on to another spouse. And then the demise of relationship begins. And that's why half of the country gets divorced. Because in so many ways, they regret the relationship they got themselves into. And then it gets very, very challenging when the child and children come into play, and I say this all the time to people I meet, if you're a father and you had a boy, um, very the firstborn boy was probably your wife's ex-wife's personality. I mean, it's so true that you'll probably see more of your ex in your son than in you. And then, you know, that's kind of a challenge for you as having a relationship, especially if you have now divorced and your child is... Uh, 18 or younger, you're going to have child support responsibilities, which who doesn't know these stories of uh, people having serious regret of having to pay the child support, and who doesn't know the stories of people who don't pay the child support? Um, that's huge. It's a huge problem in our society. The fatherless homes. It's 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 even the motherless homes. There's there's many stories of fathers will tell you the wife ran away. So I mean, it isn't always on the man. There's a lot of women do the same thing too. So and even the same thing for a woman. Um, if you're if you have a firstborn girl, just ask my wife. Who is the girl like? Her or her father? Her father. So very challenging for you as a person that now has had an emotional um, separation for the person that you loved, but now in so many ways you don't love, um, and you don't have the same feelings and respect, and then that turns into the regret. And so for where we are in today's uh, governing bodies. It seems like the decisions that they're putting upon the U.S. citizens is going to be incredible um, regret. I mean, I just can't see how where we are in today's society with the ongoing um, push for the laws to be rewritten to cater to those who don't want to abide by the laws. I mean, in so many ways, it just seems like, wow, where we're going in this country and who's carrying the burden? You know, it's really interesting. I hope somebody out there that really listens to my channel can kind of give me a heads up on this. China is incredibly, uh, has an incredible big army, military. Now, I think it would be debatable who's got the better military technology. Yeah, I'm just not the military guy, so I can't answer that. I mean, what I'm told is our country would just dwarf China in the military technology. But when it comes to the military actual boots on the ground, um, China dwarfs us. But what's intriguing, though, when have you heard about China being in an all-out confrontation and a war with another country? Now, I know I think most of us understand that they're always undermining wars, that they're behind the scenes helping the wars, like Russia war. I think most people would agree that China is right behind um, Russia and supporting the war against Ukraine. But I think to myself, look at our country. We've witnessed us being in Iraq. We've witnessed ourselves being over there in Afghanistan. You know, we've been in the Middle East and we've been in Vietnam. And, and so I think to myself, what is the, uh, he's got a rock. He's got a rock because you're so bored. You have no ball. He could not find a ball. So he's going he's to gnaw on a rock, which will probably break his teeth, right? No, it just doesn't end, man. You know what I mean? You don't have one ball. Keithy, you, you have to have a ball around here. So so the Chinese, can somebody give me in the last 20 years, I'm not talking about 30, 40, 50 years ago, 60, I'm saying can, you, can somebody 
reach out and tell me where they have seen the Chinese like us in a war, in a war with another country that's a direct confrontation with boots on the ground. Now, I know that there's stories that China goes over to Africa and undermines um, governments and takes the governments and finances them and, and then bankrupts them and then takes over the powers to be. But I just think to myself, hey, Keith, there's a ball back here, buddy. Um, I see myself for China. Where is the, uh, whoops, let me get over here, buddy. Uh, let me get this ball here for you. There you go. Here you go. All right. Go play with your ball. Go play with the rock. So, so for anybody out here on my channel, I'd be really intrigued to hear your story on where, and so the reason I'm saying this is it's the regret this government, our country, our fearless leaders, which we don't have, I so truly believe that they're undermining this country to the point that we're so susceptible to being in a war. And the concern is, it's always been Russia. But what about, you know, what about uh, China? I know that people are very concerned about that. But once again, the younger generation's country, I think it's sad because I think they're going to witness on how the, uh, no, Kiever, ball, ball, Kiever. So he's chasing the rock. I knew he was going to do that. Good boy. Here's your ball. So I think that, uh, sadly, what's going on in our society is these politicians and leaders are getting away with um, regrettable things. And it's going to take time. I mean, when you hear this guy, Brandon, in Chicago, wanting $71 million to aid the illegal immigrants, and the, uh, the community of Chicago is at City Hall, and they're protesting that this isn't right, that the monies are being taken away from their infrastructure to aid um, the illegal infrastructure. And this just seems to be going on more than ever. And, and it's just incredible on how, how this guy, how these politicians, these mayors, governors, on how they support these radical views and ideas that undermine the citizens of our country. But yet, um, it seems that the media machine, it seems like the people just shrug it off and it's another day. Or do they? Do they? And that the regret of uh, the decisions of these powers to be what they're doing to so many, what, you know, what starts to, to play out? I mean, if you watch what's going on with the, this Palestinian um, uprising here in our own backyard, you might start scratching your head. And it's a regret. And that's why I thought to myself, why did Russia, when they told her of the world, they're going to go invade Ukraine, why didn't the world stand up and tell Russia to go home? Why? You know, no fear, the fearless leaders, they're not here. Why? And but yet now the war, the war, you know, the war between Russia and Ukraine, um, we're in that war. The world is in that war, and it's created so many things of the energy crisis, meaning the energy spike in prices, and it, and it goes. And so, this is what I'm trying to get to. Do you ever hear a sitting politician raise his hand, say, "I regret that decision"? Could somebody please send me a link of a political figure in modern times? That says, I regret that decision. I don't think you'll ever hear it. I'd be, I'd be so cool for somebody to dig it up. To dig up that some political person actually admits that the, the laws that they have passed, the bills they have passed, was a terrible decision. And they regret doing that. Will Joe Manchin ever come to the table that was the last sitting senator of West Virginia that held out on the Democratic Party for the Green Agenda Bill? He held out. He held out, but then finally he caved. Will he ever admit? Will he, will he ever admit? And I think he did. Actually, you know what's interesting? I think he did uh, say he regretted that decision. And that would be pretty cool if anybody finds that that article there. Because and then look at Elon Musk. Elon Musk, get this. So the prime minister or the over the prime minister, I don't think, but over in Australia, um, I remember if you really watch my channel, I've told you numerous times that it's going to come a point. Elon Musk, they're going to try to put him in jail. They're going, to try to, they're going to try to circumvent him. They're going to try to take all his technology, and they're going to take him and control him and throw him in jail. <laughs> the, uh, some person over there in Australia is saying that this freedom of speech that this guy, Elon Musk, promotes is wrong, and it's not acceptable, and it's not acceptable in Australia, and you can't do that over here, Mr. Elon Musk, and if you continue to do it, we're going to track you down, and we're going to throw you in jail. This is a fact. 
Ha! So does Elon Musk regret buying Twitter? I, I, mean, I don't think he does. But I, but you can tell I've had these conversations numerous times. If you really follow my channel, I have talked about that purchase of Twitter, which is now X, so many times. That what plays out, what comes to be for Elon Musk being the focal point in the social media machine that can tarnish you in so many ways, and in so many ways, um, they're trying to. They're, they're trying to do that. I mean, if you look at Elon Musk, his, uh talked about it yesterday. How many people have said goodbye to him? So does, does and then here's, here's a question. Do the Tesla people that are no longer the fan of Elon Musk, do they regret giving Elon Musk money for their Tesla? Yeah, I think that's heavy and deep. But here's a question for you. Do you regret not buying Tesla stock when it's cheap? Do you regret not buying Amazon stock when it's cheap? And do you regret not buying NVIDIA, uh, the superconductor chip manufacturer? Their stock? Yeah. Do I regret all that? Heck yeah. Yeah, if I need brains, instead of being focused on the next car that's coming out, the next baddest ass vehicle coming out, well, if I would have been behind the scenes doing research on companies that are growing and I could have invested $100 here, $1,000 there, oh my gosh, but you wouldn't know me. And, and so here's the thing that's kind of intriguing on my channel that I was kind of talking about earlier about the regret of every raise in the prices in these cars. It's interesting because I hear comments out there a lot about, I buy these cars, it's all a waste of money. It is. But I, but I don't think I've ever really, it helped me out here. This is not criticism. This is not me personally wanting to attack anybody on my channel. But I don't think I've ever really per se portrayed my channel that I'm buying all these cars and trucks because I'm going to be able to sell them and make money off of them. But I think people do think that. Because when I do, I'm out in the field and I'll tell people how many cars they have. And uh, I can't hear you, baby. There's no way I can hear you. So, uh, so the kids want... Sweet potato? Yeah. Where is it? Yeah. It's in the microwave oven. Her mom ate it. Mom probably ate it. I made it for her. Huh. <laughs> I made dinner last night for, the, for us, and I made two sweet potatoes. And uh, there you go. <laughs> or maybe I ate it. I don't know. Who the heck knows? Uh, but anyways, so I run into people, and they'll be like, you buy all these cars, oh, so you flip them and you make money off them? I'm like, no, heck no. So for all those watching my channel, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, all these vehicle purchases, it's just an addiction of the experience of me wanting to go hang out at the dealership, pick out a car. The finance company actually approves me for the moment. And then the sales guy, the finance guy, the used car guy, the new, the new car, you know, the GM, whatever it may be. It's all interaction. Go test drive the vehicle. It's a different ride. It's a, it's a new feeling. That's what really goes on in my life. So that, there's my challenge in life. How do I break away from that? How do I break away from that, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's the challenge. And so I go out and get the nice new car or used car. And yeah, is the thing upside down as soon as I buy it? Of course it is. Of course it is. And I don't qualify to own high-end cars because I just don't have the right environment, nor do I want, I just don't want them. It's just, I'm not, I'm just like, that's not my path. Yeah, if I was a smart guru car guy, yeah, I'd be out buying the uh, these really rare cars and finding them for a good value and then flipping them at an auction. Yeah, but that's not who I am. That's not my lifestyle. That just isn't who I am. I'm just a guy that constantly likes to have something different and trade out something and get something else. That's just who I am. So for anybody here, and, and that's what I was saying, the pandemic truly misguided people thinking you can buy all these cars and trucks and vehicles and keep them for a while and get rid of them and you don't lose your ass. Well, <laughs> yeah, that was a very, that was about a two-year run. That was maybe a two-year run, if that, about two years. I'd say a year and a half. I'd, I'd give it 18 months where that you had the opportunity, and I did that. I actually did sell some cars, and I didn't take a hit. Because I had no choice. I was in a financial situation. My business was suffering from the pandemic um, challenges. And so, yeah, so I kind of lucked out during that. Now, no, it, it's, it would be now dire circumstances for me paying my bills. The eventually it comes that they come get the vehicle. And then they take it away. Yeah, have I been through this before? Yeah, I have. They come take the vehicle away. And then it takes about 60 to 90 days for you to get the letter in the mail that they sold the Jeep Mojave. So Jeep Mojave... Um, I bought that thing last year, so I bought that thing February of like last year, I think, and I paid like, I think, I think it was like 50, like 55, 
maybe 60 I just can't remember. It was discounted, but now these things are such a, 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 a lead weight and anchor at the dealership. You can probably buy this thing brand new now for probably in the high 40s. So the, the value of this thing is in its low 40s. So yeah, so only basically a year, 12 payments in, and I'm financed, didn't put much money down. What do you think I own this thing? Yeah, there's no way. It's it would, so if it went to auction, they would probably give they'd probably auction at 40, 38, 40, be my guess. Then I then I get the letter you owe us ten or twelve thousand dollars. Yeah. Now the race truck, this is unique. This would be unique, this would be challenging to get money out of this because it's been modded and customized. And but I don't owe a lot of money on that per se, but I don't want to really get rid of that. This Raptor 37, yeah, this thing's buried because I had to get rid of the charger that I bought the year before. So, yeah, I mean, so so everything here, and that's the thing I talk about when I buy these cars, just like the Ranger Raptor is coming in. In so many ways, we should have taken the Tremor truck or the Raptor Bronco for the Ranger Raptor. Actually, the Ranger, um, the Bronco Raptor would have been the appropriate trade for the Ranger because the, the negative equity wouldn't have been that substantial versus now, here's the challenge. I don't really have anything in the deck of cards here that I could trade for that Ranger Raptor. I don't. Everything's gonna be um, negative numbers and the Ranger Raptor, they're not gonna discount that thing. <laughs> no way. You know, that'll be, if it's 52 grand, it'll be 52 grand. So. But that'll be another day, another story. Hey, I've got a guy interested in my Harley Davidson CVO. That's pretty cool. Got a guy interested in my uh, my car hauler. And Thursday, I'm supposed to go pick up the the camper trailer. And but I really wanted to have this car hauler out of here. So I'm, I'm trying to kind of like glimmer a hope here, pray for a miracle. Uh, a guy will show up here in the next day or two, or he'll come by this weekend and buy my car hauler. So I can move this out of the way temporarily. And see, that camper trailer is 10,000 pounds. And this backside is property here. It gets wet and soggy. So there's no way. You know, this trailer, this area here is really rock solid. So this is the best area for this trailer. My daughter's like, well, move other trailers. I'm like, yeah, but you get in that backside of that property there. I sunk a trailer. I've been through this. I've been in the back property with the trailer and truck stuck. And having to uh, unhook the truck and trailer. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've been through this stuff. So, anyway, come on, dogs. Let's go. Come on. It's upstairs. And kind of caught a wrap on the uh, the morning conversations. Oh, so Carvana um, notified me. They're mailing my tags. They should be here today or tomorrow. So, I got the hard tag. So, the Corvette, sadly, my distractions of all my habits have keep kept me from going and getting that splitter fixed. So, Saturday, another project, and, here and call it a, a uh, regret, re the regrets of life, right? Is that what it is? You regret your decisions? Wasn't well, that speeding? When the police officer pulls you over and says, hey, Mr. Iceman, we just clocked you over 90 miles an hour in that Ford Raptor truck. Yeah. That was a lousy day in my life. Come on, dogs. Come on. All oh, the dogs are so funny. I just haven't seen them for like 20 minutes. They're all revved up. As I get my warm water and kind of wrap it up so it doesn't get too long video. So now, what's the next adventure, right? What's the next? It's the camper. The camper trailer. Other than that, I mean, I just shared with you. What do I have left? And one gentleman said you should get... It's too bad you get the Raptor R because then you can do the TRX Raptor R comparison. But I really can't because I have the 37 Raptor, which is every bit of that Raptor R except for it's just a smaller motor. But we'll leave that for another day. So, anyways, I think that's kind of about it on the, the agenda today and the regrets. And for me, just being a father and being a citizen of this country, I just think, sadly, people are making incredibly bad decisions that they're going to regret down the road. And that's what I was saying earlier. Will an individual raise their hand and say they regret on what they support that's created the turmoil of our country? I mean, more than ever, I'm on the field and I'm out very exposed. 
And, you know, I just think, you know, you hear about all these bad things that happen. People do crazy things. And more than ever, I just think, wow. And right now, up in that New York, Massachusetts area, very heavy in the, the regrets, the, uh, the differences of decisions. And when, what I'm saying is that you're seeing people protest the decisions that politicians have made to commit to things that they feel like they should regret doing. And then that's the whole thing. When people get nasty and mean, then they'll do devious things to you to uh, make you uh, realize you should regret what you did. Yeah, that gets really heavy and deep. But I think more than ever in today's society, social media machine, it's really incredible on X how it's just been unbelievable what people constantly, 24 seven, all they do post on you know X, how beautiful and perfect this country is. It's perfect, the best freaking guy in office ever. This guy's gonna blah, 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 and just all day long. And just, it's, but you know, it's paid actors. But if you're not that astute in life to understand that you're being um, fed propaganda like never ever seen, it's been unbelievable. I mean, you ever think to yourself, did Donald Trump ever, does he ever regret running for office? I mean, I don't think he, he, is, he does, but talk about the Pandora's box. But you know, what's so unfortunate about all that is you can pick anybody in life and start just opening up a diary of their life, of regrets, and you can have a field day. We all have regrets. We've all done things that we shouldn't have done. We've all, we're all part of it. It's mankind. That's why, what's the Bible? The Bible is the story of mankind. If you read the Bible, it's no different thousands and thousands of years later that we're the same species, the same actions, the same thoughts. And, and that's, and so, you know, once again, it's just incredible on in how, uh, how the fixation of all the regrets on one guy is beyond believable. So, uh, yeah, you already get that message. So anyways, that's it. As always, thank you so much for watching my channel, share the channel, ask for an Ice Age TV sticker. And uh, Don and Ginny are going to need a new Ice Age TV sticker because they bought a nice new Jeep Cherokee silver. Did they copy me or did I copy them? Um, Jeep Cherokee, they brought it home yesterday. So I think Don needs a new Ice Age TV sticker. So reach out there, Don. I'll send you another one or two or whatever you want. Anybody else? Ice Age TV comments at gmail.com. And share the channel and uh, share the views and ideas of the, the wild man. One guy reached out, which I loved it. I've always wondered, shouldn't I be in the Guinness Book of World Records? How do I get in the Guinness Book of World Records? But you know what? I'd have, to be, I'd have to find all the registrations, all these cars. It would be very challenging to prove that I've owned, I've purchased, I believe, 500 plus cars in my lifetime. I mean, I think, yeah, it would be very challenging. You'd have to go through, I mean, unless the DMV had an archive of every vehicle that I've ever bought in the state of Virginia, in Maryland, then that would be it right there. So, uh, everybody, thank you so much for watching my channel. God bless. Stay safe and stay tuned for more adventures. Have a great day.